So uh, I want to welcome everybody today. This is a very exciting day. It reminds me of 2020 when we had a statewide meeting just like this. And it was on January the 20th, 2020, and we promptly went into lockdown right after that. So I'm hoping there's no national disaster and no emerging infectious disease that follows the parallel. But thank you all for being here. I think it's an important day. Um, uh, I, before we begin, I want to thank all of our partners here who have helped bring this meeting together. I want to recognize that our CFAR, the UCLA CDU CFAR, and our NIH colleagues have been very important in helping this. Judy and LaShonda, thank you very much. Um, and we also want to recognize our NIH partners, particularly NIAD and NIMH, for sponsoring our meeting today, for your leadership, for your um, uh, ongoing support and guidance and planning. Uh, the CDC and HRSA, colleagues who are in the room today and for their participation and thoughtful feedback during the planning process. I want to acknowledge SAMHSA, the Indian Health Services, um, uh, NIH Office of AIDS Research and other federal partners who are in the room. This is great. The East flew here. This is great. Take advantage. Our partners and stakeholders are here and that's why they're here. San Diego CIFAR and their Implementation Science Hub, the UCLA CHIPS Implementation Science Hub, and the HIV Implementation Science Coordination Initiative, the ISCI uh, group of the Third Coast CIFAR team for their support and information. I want to recognize the LA Commission, County Commission on HIV and the LA County Division of HIV and STD programs who are always by our side in our tireless efforts to, to end the HIV epidemic here in LA. I want to recognize the University of Alabama Birmingham CIFAR, who hosted the second, the, the one before us, um, who've been so generous in sharing their process, materials, and tips to help us coordinate, particularly Donna Porter and Robin Lanzi. Those guys are great. I want to thank the, the steering committee members who met and worked to create the excellent lineup of speakers and breakout sessions. You can see their names on the slide. I also want to thank the operation committee members for working behind the scene and managing all the logistics to make this event run smoothly. I, I would like the steering and operations members to stand and be recognized, particularly Chris and Rebecca, please could you join us in standing and being recognized as planners for the meeting. Folks who are on the committee, please stand. Everybody around the room. These folks are identified by a gold star on their name badge. As you see them over the next couple of days, please say hi, say thank you, and uh, give them a high five. And so, thanks everybody, it's great to be here. I also have the great pleasure of setting the stage for the next two days. I want to offer some thoughts um, in organizing our behavioral science approaches to organize our work, or organizing our work to stop the circulation of the virus at a level of the population. The first part of the model rests on the fact that most people who are living with, um, let's see, hold on. Okay. For most people who are, who are affected by HIV are doing just fine in managing their situation. We should leave them alone as much as, plan, and, as much as we plan much of the next agenda. Instead, it's the 15 to 20 percent of folks, a significant minority who face difficulties in sustaining viral suppression or persisting with PrEP. The agenda for ending the HIV epidemic that centers research within these margins may have disproportionate effect on reducing circulating virus at the population level. Let's work there. Challenges to doing that without access to medical care, antiretroviral therapies as care and prevention are most potent tools in the toolkit are not available equally across the U.S. So disruptions in care. Um, are common when mental health and substance use disorders disorganize behaviors, including health behaviors, when these disorders are active. Finally, poverty and consistent lack of social determinants of health deaden future forward thinking and diminish one's health as a priority. It just happens. Building communities of health for those affected by HIV promises to reinvigorate those affected, their partners, our jurisdictional stakeholders, and our researchers. So, this also is, of course, where um, the outbreaks of HIV happen when you have these three things occurring at the same time. But the setting is in rural and in urban America, even with the advent of telehealth, services needed by people affected by HIV are siloed. Distances between settings uh, where services are provided, measured both in physical distance and medical access, can be daunting. 
Crosswalks between service settings are rare and difficult to access when they exist. So I offer these observations as a jumping point today as we use data to guide the next set of research efforts to reduce the circulation of HIV at the population level, that being our primary target. And doing that, we can end the HIV epidemic. So I'll close my remarks and head us into the meeting. And I want to do that by recognizing Dr. LaShonda Spencer. She's the co-director of the UCLA C CDU CFAR to give her welcoming remarks. Thank you. Wow, look at the audience. Y'all look beautiful this morning. Good morning and greetings. On behalf of myself, Dr. Zach, Dr. Courier, and the UCLA CDU CIFAR, we welcome you to Los Angeles and to the National Ending the Epidemic Research Partnership Meeting. Thank you for being here. Thank you for showing up in LA and showing us what you can do. We are proud to support this event Happy to be in partnership with CHIPS, Dr. Shapta, and the group. And we look forward to hearing the presentations today and to hear what you all are doing in terms of ending the epidemic. Through our partnerships with the federal government, NIH, CDC, our colleagues at the Public Health Department, and the meaningful engagement of our community partners and our community advisory boards, and particularly the participation in research of with our study participants, we know that we are on the road to ending the epidemic and we'll do that soon rather than later. Again, thank you and welcome to Los Angeles. Good morning and welcome. My name is Rebecca Mant. I'm a program officer at the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and recently took over the role of supporting the Institute's EHE portfolio. On behalf of NIAID, thank you all for being here and a particular thanks to the truly incredible team at UCLA who put this meeting together. I really hope that no one bothers when after this is over. <laughs> The theme for this year's meeting is accelerating innovations for equitable, equitable reach and uptake of HIV services. And the goals of the meeting are to facilitate the dissemination of innovation, innovative implementation strategies and generalizable findings from the EHE supplement projects, to promote the best practices for, H, for research community partnerships and HIV implementation research, and to offer opportunities for networking and exploring new collaborations to accelerate progress towards ending the HIV epidemic. I know everyone here is well aware that the work that we do requires that we center the diverse voices of people coming from a variety of lived experiences. So on that note, um, I'd also like to highlight that NIAID strongly supports and requests the use of inclusive and non-stigmatizing language at all institute-supported uh, meetings. Some ex examples of this would be to use uh, first person first language, such as people with HIV rather than HIV-infected people referring to uh, study participants or volunteers rather than subjects when discussing clinical uh, research participation, and considering replacing terms like at risk with language such as communities disproportionately impacted. I know that speakers have already created their slides and some language has been used for a long time, but I just want to set the expectation that we all be mindful and try our best as we engage in discussion over the next two days. Finally, I just want to end by saying that I'm so excited to meet the many researchers and local community leaders who are here this week. Thank you for all of the important work that you're doing to improve public health in your jurisdictions and across the country. And with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Dr. Chris Gordon, to close out welcoming remarks. Good morning. <clears throat> so thank you. I'm excited just to add my welcome and enthusiasm to see you all. I'm super excited for the next two days. Thank you for making the time to be a critical part of our collaboration together on EHE. This is a partnership meeting. That's how the meeting is framed. We cannot do this work without each other's important roles. There are over 350 attendees. We come from 34 EHE jurisdictions and 59 counties and cities. We are from health departments, 
HIV investigators, hubs, community partners, project implementers, and federal partners. The reasons that we are here are many. We are here to honor those who we have lost during this last period of time. We are here to fight for those who continue to live with stigma in their communities who may not have a voice, often simply because of who they are and who they choose to love. We are here for those who do not have access to the best prevention and treatment tools. They should be readily available to all. So we know changes need to happen. We are here because we want things to be different. Over the next two days, we'll talk about important successes and challenges that remain. Implementation science is one way we can better understand how best to get those tools into the hands of those who need them most, but this must be done with strong community engagement. So let's continue to build those connections here across jurisdictions, sharing strategies, and learning from each other. We have structured this agenda so that there are a lot of opportunities to do this, some presentations of projects, breakouts to dig deeper and share your own experiences, and other topics all directed to optimizing the impact of all your efforts. Science and community and implementers working together. Your work is the inspiration that drives us to do what we do. We at NIH want to be a resource for you in any ways that we can. So thank you again for being here, and um, I'll turn it over to Commander Michelle Sandoval Rosario, Office of Infectious Disease Policy. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you.